In this video, I show you how to create an interesting architectural illustration with the help of SketchUp. If you're like me and you're not the best at hand drawing, I've got a little solution for you with the aid of computer assistance and a little bit of tricks and paper. Now that we're in the age of AI doing images and obviously um, rendering software getting more advanced, I still believe that there is a place for a hand drawing. What a hand drawing does is it keeps the client, the viewer, away from looking at something in too much detail, in my opinion. Hand drawings and illustrations, such as the ones that I've got on the screen now, they focus the eye on the bigger picture and the broad strokes, the concept, and it's a great starting point to sign off a certain stage of a project, obviously the concept stage, sign that off, and then start to build the detail in using other mediums. Now, I used to work for 12 months um, on my year out at BDP, one of the UK's largest and best practices. And I really liked um, the illustrations that some of the senior architects produced during my time there. So that was my starting point to just gain a point of reference. But in my search, I've then found a lovely illustration by a company called Periscope Studio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a guide for this video. And then I'm going to explain how I would approach this illustration because to be brutally honest, I'm not the actual, I'm not the best hand drawer in the world. And what I use is SketchUp to just give me a little lift on perspective, positioning people, sense of scale and things like that. I will then print that off, trace over it, bring it back into Photoshop. So I will use this illustration to talk you through my process for producing such illustrations. So let's get into it. So I think what we do is we start with the road network. So I'm just going to give myself a big plane. And the idea here is, again, to not fall into the trap of adding too much detail. The roads normally six meters. Look like I'll be extending this. Oh, no, I'm done. So, what I'm doing is just adding in the basic details. It doesn't take long before it's ready to print and then add our own flourishes. And again, what I'm not going to be modeling everything and then simply tracing it. It's just to give us a guide. And then we will add some touches by hand. I will just add some shades to it. So we've got a small little block on the right there. I like that they're showing kind of storylines there as well, that's good. So we'll do something similar. Okay, and then we'll rotate that one there, so you can just see, it looks like it's lined up there. And, and there, there's a, a, an early example of how it helps with perspective. Okay, so one, one, two, three, four, plus roof. Okay. 
And all this just takes a little bit of a little bit of the leg work out of it. And as I say, it ensures that you're getting your perspective and stuff spot on. Okay, so you're getting the idea there. Let me um, speed up the video, finish off the model, and I'll, uh, and I'll be right back. So we're all done with the model. I think it's quite a, an interesting piece of design. I've added a bit of transparency to the trees just so we've got that option if we need it. You can see the way they've used transparency in the illustration. I do quite like the style of the illustration as well. It's a little bit more abstract and probably what I will go for. Um, you can see things, you know, I've just dropped shrubs in, people in, all that sort of stuff. And I will put my own little style to these. It won't just be a straight trace. There'll be a little bit of interpretation and you know you can continue to just play with the trees things like that you could add a little bit more detail maybe um just some of our frame lines possibly here um you, you could add a bit more but that just took me 20 minutes to just knock out a quick model with a little bit of a little bit of you know the concept design in mind. Maybe just add a little bit of possibly add a little bit of colour, but again, you know, we can we can do that in Photoshop. Then another interesting thing I like about this is is the shadows. Now, what I like to do when I'm doing illustrations is I obviously, you know, everything ends up in Photoshop. And a nice thing to do is actually use the SketchUp shadows with the hidden line style turned on. Let's just make it all completely white. Like so. And those shadows, if you import them with edges turned off like that, you can add blur, you can add effects to them, paint filters and all that sort of stuff to actually make it look part of the drawing. So I, I do actually use uh, the shadows. Now when we trace over the outlines and then continue to add details to the drawing, that will automatically be obviously a different scale. Um, so there'll, there'll be a little bit of uh, line through in Photoshop but nothing too, nothing too onerous. So this is enough. Uh, in terms of detail. So what I will do now is I will print this off probably a three size and uh, trace round it. So I give me a sec and I shall film that part of the process as well. Photoshop. We've done our drawing where we've traced over the basics of the 3D model and then I've just added little flurries in like the balustrade and the little flicks on the glass just to you know help identify that it's glass, little spider joints, doors. And I've also you know obviously put little flurries on the vegetation and I finished it off with a just a little sharpie pen and just put a thicker line around the edge of the building. I always like to do that on my diagrams. I think it's quite effective on illustrations as well. So a couple of a couple of nice quick moves just to get a bit of instant gratification, which I think is always 
quite nice. So I've duplicated the layer. So I've got the original, always keep the original. And now it's a case of just doing a bit of brightness and a bit of contrast, just to take away all the blemishes. Duplicate again and multiply that. So it boosts the line width, merge layers. And it's same again, brightness and contrast. You could go, you could go really mad and start to brush some of those, you know, blemishes out that have come through from the scan or, I do remember a little smudge actually. Yeah, yeah there we go. So there's a little smudge there. You could, you could really go to town on it. But I personally think, I, mean, I will get rid of that smudge actually, but I personally think little blemishes and stuff, obviously that makes it feel natural. That's the point we're going for. It's actually nothing stopping you. If I just turn the shadows off a set. There's actually nothing stopping you doing a sketchy edges in here. Let's just do pencil care. There's nothing stopping you doing that, but it's obvious. It's There's no way, um, it just doesn't feel natural. So that's obviously why we're going through this process. So little blemishes are always a good thing. So then again, in the name of instant gratification, what I then want to do is bring in the shadows. So what we do is we turn the edges off and we export that. I'll drop it. In. Right, the resolution of that is nowhere near where we need it to be. Let me just go again. Options. Right. So let's let's really crank that up. Six thousand. And just replace that. Okay, let's see if that's a bit. Right, there we go. We then want to sit it underneath and then apply and multiply to the one above so it just shows the line work. And actually, the scale of that isn't far off at all. You know what, it's not done though, it's actually not. So let me just do that again. See the way all, it, it, it's it's just picking up the branches because I've made the, the tree canopies transparent. So let's just, let's just make them solid again, just so we're getting the shadows. Yeah, that's better. Now you could draw the shadows on you know, in, in Photoshop. But I think, you know, why, why bother when, it, when you can do it that, that quickly? Then what I like to do to soften it is just a simple blur pass. Now you can go too much, that, you know, that is too much. I'm just looking back at that reference. So let's do something like that and then be careful with the level of transparency. I think that's 25% plenty. So that's a good starting point. So let's make sure we save our PSD file. And then really there's two key moves from um, here on in, which is number one is the basic coloring. And then number two is the optional um, exploration of adding textures. So I'll show you a little technique for both. And then I'll um, 
I'll just give the video a little speed up just to work through it. So in terms of the, the grass in the foreground, let's just say, create a, a folder and we'll call that grass. And then nice big brush, sorry, and then, sorry, and then a new layer within that, within that folder. And then simply just paint quite loosely Oh, we're getting we're getting strange uh, brush strokes there. Let me just where are we brush settings? So the spacing wants to be one percent. That, that's that's why we were getting that sort of ribbed look. So there we go. Nice big strokes. And then if you ever need to pause, like you through strain or you've run out of mouse mass or something like that, just finish it off with a nice little flick like that. I think that's just a good little bit of style. And then same again over the other side. And don't be too precious at all when it comes to, well not at all, but don't be too precious with your, your brush strokes. I'm just gonna change this to vegetation. That one is grass. So then over here we can Again, just add that in. Then we can do trees. Now, with an illustration like this, layers are so important. You can never have too many layers. You want the ability to change opacity afterwards. So make sure that you're, every time there's a new color in play, it's a new layer. What I should have done there as well is let's just drop the shadows above. There you go. And then, actually, I was, I was about to drop the opacity, but what I would say to you is actually color everything in solid to begin with. Just give it that one pass. As you can see, I'm being quite, quite free with it. There's no need to be too precise. This is an illustration. And as I've said in the video, the, the purpose of this is to portray a concept, nothing too detailed. And the purpose of doing that is, I think it eases your, your viewers. So that could be a client, a tutor, whatever else. It eases them along the journey. If you show too much detail too soon, like if I turn this into a, a realistic visualization, people tend to dwell on the detail and it really obstructs the design process. Whereas this technique, I think it's it's, it's more deliberate and it takes your users on a, on a bit more of a journey. And you can see as well that it's just nice and quick. Nothing too stressful. If anything, quite the opposite. I think it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice experience. This and it is again, as it it's refreshing compared to all the other tools that are out there. It is nice. So you can see there. I won't, I won't, I won't bore you with going through every absolutely everything. But you can see there how I'm adding color. To the image and it's starting to work into quite a nice illustration now what you could do actually because i was talking about opacity you could reduce the opacity of the folder itself that's a nice way of of doing things or if you wanted more control you can then start to micromanage the opacities in uh, within each layer but actually just having seen that at a glance I think I'd be tempted to just do it folder wide. I think that looks a little bit nicer. It also maintains the the kind of let me just let me just let me see what I mean. So see the way that the trunk uh, colour sits beneath the tree canopy there. Well, if you mess with the opacity of each layer, you'll start to see that filter through. And I don't, I don't think that looks great. So I think kind of a master override opacity is, 
is the way to go in my opinion. Then the next thing to do will be to go on a website that gives you really nice textures such as Polygon. If we then type in Brick, we can then download a Brick. Will this, will this, will this, no, I'll have to log in. Um, I'll log in in a sec, but the idea then is you download a, a texture and then you can bring that in and make it, um, again, feel like it's part of the illustration. So what I've done is I've downloaded this black multi Brick and I'm given this folder with a few color variants actually, which is quite good. So if I just drop that in, it's 8K resolution as well. Probably, probably a bit overkill that, but that's fine. Overdoing it is better than under. So then we want to make another folder or group called textures. Drop that in there. Control T, reduce that down. Doesn't have to be precise either, which is nice in terms of its scaling because we are in illustration mode. So I'm just duplicating it. And again, the, the, the beauty of those texture websites, such as Polygon, is that the textures are tiled as well. So you can just copy, paste, duplicate, all that sort of stuff, and you'll get. Um, a perfectly repeating texture. Notice, by the way, I've just spotted something here, which is actually a bit of a fluke, but it's, it's good to show. I didn't draw a vertical line there, but see the way the shadow is kind of doing that for me? I quite like that, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave that in. Make sure the perspective's about right, but again, you know, there's a lot of freedom here. So something like that. And then what I would do is I was I would merge them. And just a little thing of I should have done first was let me just turn that to 50% and then rename that original brick. Just so we've got it to call on because I've now warped this texture and you know, it can't, can't be reused on another perspective. Um, so let me then just go around the edges like so. And of course, I'll just, I'll just demonstrate it with one window. You then cut that out like that, okay? We then want to add another group, call it Building Colors with its own layer. So let's just call it Gray. Let's just drop the, let's just do the layer for now, drop the opacity of the layer. Maybe go a bit higher than that. And then using the building colors, we can then, with just the use of one, maybe just a little bit of blue to it like that, with just the use of one backdrop texture, we can then go round. And as I've said, not too precious. With your color again. Now I'd probably, and again, this is why you know groups and layers and everything are so important. I would drop the textures on top, and then you 
can actually see them probably probably can't afford to do 25 percent and then with that it still feels like it's a colored illustration but then you're just given that sense of texture i think that as a as a, a blending of styles is just super effective if i then just drop the building color folder opacity a little bit you can then start to see how you can you know how you can have a play you can you can do that forever to be honest the uh, the, the play of opacity levels and and colors and all that sort of stuff so there are a couple of techniques there's one more to just bring it all home but for now let me um speed up the video i will get to work on applying all those techniques across the image and then we'll come back for just one last little finish and touch which is just adding little little detail shadows across the image i think we will have a, a half decent illustration there everything colored in now it's a case of playing with either the opacity or actually messing with the lightness of the color and what I mean by that is if we go into the glass for example and we play with the opacity you will see overlapping in certain areas I'm trying to find somewhere Maybe we need to make yeah, so you can sort of see it there. There's, a, there's basically a bit of overlap, and where what I was doing was I was using the glass color to kind of tidy up the the cutting in around the windows. So if we just go back to 100% for the glass particularly. You can actually go in hue saturation and just lift the lightness if you're not happy with the color. So if I just lift that by 50, it maintains its solid opacity, but it's obviously a little bit closer to the to the tone that we're after. You could even do brightness as well. And the key here is subtlety. You don't want big, you know, garish, bold colors. So if we can continue to just work into some of these things and what we can do is we can maintain that master opacity in the folder. So 50% is kind of what I've been going for. Vegetation, oops, vegetation down to 25. But say for example, we just want that timber To be lighter my advice would be to not mess any further with the opacity and use the human saturation sliders because you can even you know you can adjust the color as well which works really well maybe just drop the textures to 35 so that gives you a bit of a, a bit of a sense of how you can change the colors and mess with the level of subtlety as well might even just drop that again i always i always tend to do i always end up going really transparent with it or you know almost like completely transparent and then kind of waking it back up so that'll that'll do for that sort of explanation of how to get to this point and then one last little thing is i like to create just a folder called something like small shadows give it a layer shadow brush we want to we do want to use a black brush because we want ultimate flexibility when it comes to um, playing with its opacity and then it's a case of we know that the sun is coming from left to right on the image so you can just add these little 
little kind of bonus details. Maybe even little details that you missed, you know, maybe we can add in that line that we, we've we missed. Potentially it's what we're about to see. Around the bushes we can, you know, add little kind of contact shadows with the ground. Maybe onto the people as well. Being a little, a little loose with this. But again, we could just add a little bit of extra detail around there. Maybe a bit of shadowing in there. Again, I won't do, won't do the whole illustration. If I then just set that to a really low opacity, maybe say 20%, you can see how that's starting to add detail now. You might want to just emphasize the storylines like that. And for me, that's the finishing touch. There are a lot of things that you can play with like you know opacity and all that sort of stuff and colours obviously and then this thing just just brings it home that kind of secondary shadow layer just to make it feel properly like an illustration so I hope you've learned something in this video and I would encourage you to try this technique at the start of your next project rather than feeling tempted to jump straight into um, visualization mode. This is a great way of presenting early concepts. You can play with colors and texture you know, very easily. Great way of demonstrating early concepts. And as I say, the point of this is it takes people on a journey rather than jumping into the detail too soon. So thanks for watching. And any questions, either leave them in the comments or drop me an email at adam at academia.com.